You know, this, <laughs> this Bloody Mary's been sitting here so long, it's done grown flowers out of it. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Uh -huh. The very lovely Doris Ford yes. has provided us with another floral rendition. <laughs> Isn't that just wonderful? It's and it says, I'm going to start my diet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we have several cups like this. <laughs> Anyway, that's pretty. That's well, pretty. How you been, Dr. Bly? Real good. And real me good. Too. Yeah, I know. We've both been real frisky. <laughs> We're both still sitting in the upright position. That's always very encouraging, I think. All right. Okay. Letters. We get letters. Here's one <laughs> from Cecil St. Clair King, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't laugh at it. That's a wonderful name. It's a great name. It's I'm not. Just, it's just so many of them. Some people just have, like me, a little short and that snippy uh -huh. name, Larry Bly. Mm -hmm. yeah, blah, blah. That's it. This guy's got 15 names. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. You can look him up in the phone directory under seven different pages. <laughs> uh -huh. It's incredible. Dear Larry and Laban, I will not use the diminutive Lab or Lair, <laughs> as I believe that would be a breach of professional ethics in your case. The purpose of this letter is to request that you do not send us a copy of the receipts <laughs> on your show number 603. Please believe me when I assure you from the bottom of my heart that this is no reflection on your professional skill, but rather a commentary on the two receipts. That, that's exactly the way it's spelled, too. Both dishes remind me of those my mother used to make when she was drunk. <laughs> If I may be allowed a serious comment, my wife and I have seen and enjoyed your programs for years when shown on channel 56 WNVC in Manassas, Virginia. To our everlasting sorrow, they did not run your shows for several months last year. We wrote and called them about it. And I'm so glad to report that they're back on the air. Best wishes, Cecil St. Clair King, Jr. Well, that's wonderful. Well, little Cindy Stump, I guess it's little, has written us a letter and says, Dear well, Cook and Cheap. Name a Stump. Could you please send all, please send me all of the recipes from, well, no, we can't do that. Every one of them? Yeah. For eight years? That's right. It's, it's, it's an impossibility. Hmm. I think your show is good. Without <laughs> you, food, I would die. I also think the skinny one of you both is cute. <laughs> well, thanks, honey. And uh, yeah, cute, then isn't? it says, "Have fun cooking cheap. Don't drop those eggs." And and something at the bottom, I probably which ought not we to can't read. even repeat yeah. on the air. She didn't mean it the way I guess it <laughs> reads, but we'd probably get in trouble with the FCC. They're cooking cheap chips. Well, here I go again in writing to you two boys on your recipes, which you demonstrated on Saturday, September sixth. I guess that was last year. We don't know. They were so appetizing looking, I just will have to try them if you will send me the recipes for the two oriental dishes. Oh, you, yes. yes. That's show 606. They were yakitori and sukiyaki. <laughs> I enclosed, it was an oriental comedy uh -huh, team. Yeah. You remember that? I enclosed a self-addressed stamped envelope for you to send my request. Thanks again. Yours, Goodwin Miller of Washington, D.C. Goodwin, thank you. And that was a good one. I'm going to read this one. I think we'd better go cook. Oh, all right. All right, gentlemen, I watched your show today and would like to have copies of all your recipes. I am enclosing a legal size envelope. I hope they all fit. Well, they don't. You boys sure cook some great looking food. Thanks. I appreciate it from Judy Ledoux. And Judy encloses this little uh, prayer here at the end. May your moccasins make happy tracks in many snows and the rainbow always touch your shoulder. Oh, Let's all say it together. Oh. A little Indian. What happened to the camera greeting. crew? Let's say it together. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's better. Boy, so there it takes them a while just yeah, I I tell you, to get into the Black, swing of things. What are here. you doing today? Well, besides ripping my pocket, I just caught my comb. Did you on do that? that? Look, I look, I ripped mine today. Just caught that thing on that chair. Get ruined, a shot of that. You ruined see a perfectly that again expensive pair of drawers. <laughs> this is an up to date pair of pants, too. They got pleats. You notice that? <laughs> so, anyway, I'm doing a beard. Beef steak. A beard. Beard. <laughs> That's what it says. You mean it a beef steak is got, so old it's got a beard on it? Beard <laughs> beef steak. Don't get too close to it. You get your beard, beard burns. Oh. Now I'm going to do well, that. Well, where did it come from? Wh what? Oh, the recipe. Yes. <laughs> Jackie Simek. What is BBL California? You know, I can't figure it out. BBL California. BBL. Anybody in the audience know any? Well, Nobody? somewhere. Okay. And Barbara Love of Chester, Virginia, and that's that's a true name, sent in the recipe I'm going to do, which is for celery casserole. Ooh. 
My, my, my. Oh, mm -hmm. Lord. I'm just going to do one quick thing and I'll okay. turn it over to you. I'm going to turn this on high. With a little margarine in it, nice uh -huh. big pan. You got to start at where you got to start out with a big pan because this mess gets bigger and bigger as you go along. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself all out of space. So I'm going to put some margarine in there, about a quarter of a, uh, well, about a half a stick, and heat that up real hot. And we're going to take about uh, five medium onions, three or four big ones, chop them real thick. And we'll throw them in there and saute them. That's the first thing I'm going to do, so that's not too exciting, so I'll let Laban start his now. All right, I have got right here three cups of, of sliced celery. That's about half of a stalk of celery. Is it really? Mm-hmm. You know, a stalk is the, a, a conflagration of ribs. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Fibrovascular bundles. And uh, Remember that? Yes. And so, so I wanted you to know somebody else could say big words. Uh huh. Too. It's remarkable. Anyway, let me get all this. The celery has to be parboiled for five minutes. What's so the difference between pre-boiling and parboiling? Beats me. <laughs> well, I mean, who cares even? Well, let's see if our technical staff knows. Do you know? <laughs> yep, they know. <laughs> they don't know all anything. Right, anyway, this well, is the dumbest bunch of people I think I've ever been around. I mean, a nice sort of yeah, boy, yeah, you know, except and, Jim, who's, yeah, who's you know, just, he's got, well, you know, we don't want to make a lot of fun well, of him, but he does right, have but some, he five of his own problems, and it's just real sad. <laughs> has personal problems we can't talk about on the air. But now, yeah. let's see, I got a, I've got a can of sliced water chestnuts that oh, is going to be right. open. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. I'm just going to do them without the lid. And I've got to drain them, because they're going to go down. Drain them. Drain them. You have to drain them. And they're going to go down in here into a casserole and let me I gotta tell you something Johnson what uh, we've already got <laughs> we've already ruined this fine liner <laughs> on our <laughs> new trash can I wish everybody could show them that trash can uh, well, that's it a is, real pretty a, new it's trash it's a shiny can new one it's gorgeous and they, and they See how it's for a metal one it is nice that, it makes more noise when you can can. it around but anyway Maureen is just having a fit. I you know, know, we have just blown out every tube in her system. Oh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that with a fork. You know. The water <laughs> chestnuts are going to go in this casserole. Water chestnuts in the casserole. Something smells like it's burning. Mm -hmm. And also going in will be a package of almonds that have been blank, uh, slivered. So they go right over in here. So that's one little package of almonds. That is a two ounce package of almonds and they go over into that. And now I'm going to use... What? Huh? Oh, it couldn't be. I hadn't even started yet. I have three tablespoons of margarine mm -hmm. that I'm going to use three tablespoons of flour with. That, does that look like three tablespoons? I forgot to get a spoon. I think it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody thinks so. Did, and now you got to brown these onions. That's what I'm doing right now. I got it on high and I'm browning them as quick as I can because time's a flying. And I'm making a roux over here out of the flour and this margarine. Well, while you're making a roux, <laughs> you'll rue the day. I'm going to get out some, some steak that I bought at one of our fine local stores. I had this cut specially. This recipe calls for three pounds of round steak cut one inch thick. And I want to tell you something, boys and girls, there's nothing cheap about this. So I'm going to cut it real thin so we can serve three times as many people and justify the cost of this slab of beef. And I'm slicing mushrooms. But I'll tell you one thing, it's pretty. And not only is it pretty, but it is very, very tender. I know because I have some that I did yesterday. And what we're going to do is cube that now because while we're doing our onions, <coughs> are you all right, Johnson? Yep. I thought perhaps you'd fallen out there for a minute. While we're browning the onions, we want to cut this steak into little bitty cubes appropriate for a nice, uh, 
What is it I'm trying to say? I lost exactly. I lost <laughs> exactly what I was talking about. For a, a, a mouthful. For a mouthful. A bite size. A bite size. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting sillier and sillier. Now my roux is going to town. So is the celery. And some of these mushrooms, I got these on sale. So that some of them have gone over a little bit. Ready? But they're cheap. They're good and cheap. And you know, cheap is our middle name. Well, for the most part. <laughs> I'm still cubing up this fine steak. Boy, this is a nice cut. This made me salivate. Well, that big hunk of fat didn't, but anyway. Now you gotta be careful, I don't wanna burn my onions. Oh, lordy. Now what you do when you get them browned up like I just have is you pull them off and you take them and reserve them in another bowl because now we're going to throw our beef in there and we're going to on high once again keep your heat real high because we want to sear it on the outside to sort of sort of seal the juices in there now what we're going to do is just throw that right in there and start browning that on the outside you don't have to do too much of that couple of minutes worth. Isn't that pretty? Salt it and pepper it a little bit. All right, Laban, that's right, it for well, me for now. My celery is parboiling very well and my roux is in good shape. The, you need to cook this a while. It's not until just until the butter is melted. You need to let it cook so that the flour cooks. Otherwise, you'll get a raw taste that is unpleasant to say the least. And I guess what I need, oh, is a measuring cup. I'll get you one. All right. Oh, our lovely assistant's going to get you one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go over here and just give it a pitch. Oh, well, while he's oh, doing that, I'm going to salt and pepper this beef a little bit while it's getting real done on the outside. Where's the pepper? There it is. Boy, that smells oh, good, is, doesn't it? Now, you take so a wonderful. look at that, you see it's starting to get brown on the outside. Real nice. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That Ooh, is gorgeous. That is full of gorgeousness. I wish I had. Does anybody have a camera? We could take a picture of it. It's so lovely. What did I do with the can opener? <laughs> I swear. He has lost Well, I had it right here. Have a loving ago. mind. What, where did I put it? Where is it? Come here. Well, yo. I don't know where the can opener is. We've lost it. What, you, you need to get into hey, something? Hey, you know what? I found, I picked up this, used this cookbook, uh, this the pot holder, to pick up a hot pan with last week. And when I was washing it, I discovered that these letters had transferred off, off onto my hot pan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to be careful how I use There's that. Nothing like a quality product, and that's nothing. While I'm doing this, I'm going to dump my celery out now because it's been in there five minutes. All right. I'm going to put the Woo! onions back in with the beef, and we're going to cut this whole mess down a little bit now. We don't want it to go fast anymore. And now we're going to add some secret ingredients. Let me know when you need to interrupt me. Well, I'm... Go ahead. I'm just... Uh, I've got to put in some milk here, three quarters of a cup of milk. This is a half a cup, but I'm going to be in big trouble here in just a minute if I can't find what I did with the can opener. Well, while he's doing that... Now, let me just stir this around here. I have there. some parsley. It calls for dried parsley, but I had some fresh, and I didn't think anybody would be offended. So I brought some fresh parsley in from home. It's just so pretty. It's just so darn pretty. I'm going to mix that in there, too. Isn't that pretty? Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Oh, heck. Did that... <laughs> Somebody threw it in the trash can. We have found Somebody it. Somebody threw the can opener Back in the trash can. Back to Laban. Can. Get what it off me. Class Get it off would me. Do that. Did you do that, Bly? No, but I've made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> did you really? I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> what did you do, Bly? Well, I was supposed to pull this beef off, too, before I added the onions, because oh. i got to make a nice little gravy for this. You can't do that with all the beef in there. Well, right now, what now, i got to do is add some water and make a roux. Well, we may have to do go into the second series on this program. Well, right now I'm adding a, can, uh, a cup of canned chicken stock to this uh, little gravy over here. <laughs> Lord, what a day. I have done this once and I did it so perfectly and today I was just real cocky about it. 
came in here, just didn't even look at my notes, and mm -hmm. just started ripping through it. And first thing you know, I realized I forgot you have made half a, of what I needed. Ungodly mess. Take some water and put in there. Try not to clang any oh, water oh. upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. We're going to be killed. Now I'm going to put my celery into the casserole. This is my parboiled celery that's, that's parboiled for about five minutes. And I'm going to, that's a couple of tablespoons full. Of, and I'm going to stir it wow. around using my knife. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> here comes the rest this of the very shortly. The here. most humorous things I've ever been involved in. All right, now you have to get your celery and your water chestnuts and your almonds all stirred up real pretty. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just having such a okay. good time. Oh, I just Now, this mess over here is not boiling yet because it doesn't heat up right now. I'm adding a half a cup of mushrooms, these mushrooms that I chopped earlier, to this. Secret, secret recipe time, boys and girls. I want you to see the secret of this recipe is <laughs> going in here right now. Oh. It's about a can and a half of the stuff. And hey, listen, I, so you wouldn't get fat now. I, I'm using light. <laughs> so now, over here. Over here. Over here, I'm putting a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Set it right, too. This is the biggest mess. Into this little saucer, which is probably too little. Now, a half a cup of Parmesan cheese goes into this. A hopeless cause. <laughs> little did we know when we set out on this adventure today that so much could go well, so wrong in so me. little period of time. But it has. Where are we? Flour, water, dried parsley, salt and pepper to taste, <gasps> a little vinegar, about two tablespoons. Link, and link. I, and I, <laughs> I know they're having a good time trying to follow us back there today. I'm uh, mixing up my cheese and my breadcrumbs. Well, oddly enough, this oh, is coming out okay. Well, so is this. Now, this is going to bubble up into what we hope is going to be a delicious cream sauce here I don't need in a six few minutes. minutes. <laughs> I've just about oh, burned my towel off getting where I am. And you got it all over me. Now, I, what I'm, I've done is make a cream sauce. Let's review this with three tablespoons <laughs> of butter, three of flour, some milk, and some chicken broth, and a half a cup of mushrooms. And that's turning into a very lovely cream sauce with mushrooms in it. And we're going to pour that all over this celery mess here in just a minute. And in the meantime, I, oh, and there it is right now. Three cups of celery <laughs> cut diagonally, a half, uh, quarter of a cup of slivered blanched almonds, uh, half a cup sliced water chestnuts, five tablespoons of margarine, three tablespoons of flour, a cup of chicken broth, three quarters cup of milk, half a cup sliced mushrooms, half a cup Parmesan cheese, half a cup of breadcrumbs. <laughs> and that's it for the celery casserole. You could write in and ask for it for show number 803. Oh, I don't think I want to. Beard beef steak. Three pounds of round steak, one inch thick. Now, what I made was a half recipe today to save on time. That's an awful lot. It'll feed a lot of people. Five medium onions, thickly sliced. You brown those things real fast. Take them out, brown the uh, steak, take that out, and then uh, put it all back together again. Five cups of beer or ale, which I just added. Two cups of beer or ale two tablespoons of vinegar, four tablespoons of margarine, which you start out with the flour, a little bit of flour to make a roux, sort of thicken it up, a cup of water, dried parsley or fresh if you got it, salt and pepper to taste. And I got that stuff on there right now, and it is starting to look real pretty. Now this is going to now bubble away very slowly in this pan, covered or uncovered for a period of about uh, two hours, hour and a half, two hours, and that'll cook this all through nice and tender. Should be quite good. All right, now Larry, I'm pouring this cream sauce over the celery Ooh. and the other vegetables in there. And that looks like it's going to be delicious today. Now, what do you do? You pop that in the oven and uh, Well, we, we're home? not finished. We got some more stuff to do oh, to it. Oh, don't yet tell here. me that. Oh, yes. Much more, much more. Let's see which one. I don't want that to cook too much because that'll be very hard to clean later on. 
Now we're going to put this fine topping of cheese and breadcrumbs mm -hmm. on it. On it. <laughs> and we're going to pop it in a 350 degree oven. And you just kind of, now this one is another one that certain cookbook editors in Texas won't approve of because you have to kind of watch it. I can't tell you. Every oven cooks differently. You have to cook it until you, uh, it bubbles. And when it bubbles all up real pretty, then it's ready. Now I've got just a little more of my margarine over here and I'm going to uh, <clears throat> dot this with a little bit of, of margarine here so that you would get that nice flavor down through there. Make sure you dot your eyes too while you're... Oh, well, I will, I will. Oh. Boy, I'm sure glad mine's finished. Oh, well, good. Well, you know, is... I was real worried there for a minute. I wasn't going to get finished. Is that uh, Wicked Miss Witch with oh, us today? Oh, yes. I think it's is time for a fly-through. They had picked her up on radar earlier, and she was doing and all And, you know, we found out last week... That she's in ...that a Miss Witch is in a family way, which is... Rather unfortunate since she's a, a miss. Come here, honey. She's right frisky today. She's also right dusty. <clears throat> <laughs> Get on out of here. Whew. Yeah? Well, I think maybe you ought to read this one. Dear boys, Ethel and me made up a big batch of fig wine last year. I realize that you don't see fig wine every day, but we thought we'd try it. Six months after we started with it, we tasted it. It was the nastiest stuff that you ever had in your mouth. We said that it ought to age some more. We tried it again the other day and it had turned to vinegar. The question is, what did we do wrong and what kind of recipes have y'all got that would go with fig vinegar? Junior and Ethel McGee of Good, Virginia. Well, Junior and Ethel, we will, uh, let's see, next week we'll do some sharp tasting dishes. Ooh. And uh, maybe that'll uh, help you some. Fig I always vinegar. get worried we have anything sharp around this kitchen at this great television station. It is station just highly dangerous. It's sort of dangerous down here. It really is. Well, I'm just real pleased with how pretty this came out, considering how badly I put it together. That just goes to show how easy this recipe was. I think it's time to go over and taste what we got. Oh, all right. Let me turn the heat on so I... I thought I'd never live for this moment. Oh, it just looks so good. Oh, well, it's already served over here. Well, I thought I'd get an early start, Ben. <laughs> well, here, let me help you to some casserole. Oh, it looks pretty. It looks like banana pudding. <laughs> well, let me try the casserole. Well, it's real green, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mm -hmm. like it. Interesting. You've got a big part of it hanging on your lip. Gross. All right, let's try. That's mm -hmm. good. I really do. I like that. Let's try some of this beef steak. Mmm. Mm. Nice. Very nice. We got to go. Both very good recipes. Wonderful flavor. Mmm. Bye. <laughs>